Hey guys, this is Ray. So today we're going to be speaking about my A to D 9624 converter. The reason I'm making this video, I want to help those that are starting out. Some of you got questions. What is an A to D? What is a D to A? Some of you guys that are starting out probably have no idea what a converter is. Now, I wasn't going to make a video on this because there's hundreds and hundreds of videos on converters. I decided, you know what, let's go because I, I've read so many things that are correct, so many things that are incorrect, and I just wanted to talk about my experience. Hopefully it helps somebody out there. All right, so basically this is how it works. Doesn't matter if you have a $50 interface or a $1,000 interface. You already have an A to D, D to A converter built in. Quick history, why I got this converter. A couple of years back when the Project Mix IO came out, I don't know, that thing cost me about $1,500. I was so excited because on, on paper, that thing has so many specs. It was amazing on paper. So I purchased the thing, came home, and at the time, I, I don't even remember what I was recording with, but... I decided to hook up the mics and I had a session that day. And then I found out that the mic pre's on that unit completely sucked. And to be honest, one of the reasons why I didn't get rid of the unit, or I didn't send it back to uh, the store, because it had a control surface. At the time, you couldn't get a control surface for that price point. Everything was so much money. And that's why I kept the unit. So I had to figure out what can I do. And after reading so much information out there, misleading information, I ended up getting a converter. When you hook up your microphone to your interface, that signal from the mic to the interface is analog, and we all know that. Your interface converts that into digital, and there you go, that's your analog to digital. And then you have your digital to analog, which we're really not gonna talk about that in this video, which is your interface has to convert that digital signal to analog, and you hear it from your speakers. So by getting an external converter, you're gonna get a better, picture, you're gonna get a better image, you're gonna capture better audio. Hopefully I explained that correctly. I was looking through documents and trying to give you a better explanation. I understand how these things work, but then to try to explain it the proper way and I look like a dumbass is two different things. But yeah, that's basically what the A to D does. It captures, it gives you a better picture of your audio signal. At the same time, I'm able to hook up any type of preamp that I want to, to this unit, and I could bypass the converters and the preamps on my Project Mix I.O. So now the Project Mix I.O. is kind of useful now. And the way this hooks up, the back of your interface, well, most of them, has either a SPDIF connection or a Toslink optical, whatever you want to call it, connection. My C600 doesn't support a Toslink connection, so I'm using SPDIF. Now I've heard somebody say this and it was just mind blowing. Somebody actually said, you know, hook up to uh, Toslink because the connection is going to be a lot better. It's going to sound better. And I couldn't believe that because that's a digital connection. There's only zeros and ones. So regardless of which one you use, you're not going to hear the difference. Now there is a difference and the difference is channels. So SPDIF, I believe, and if I'm wrong, guys, correct me. SPDIF only supports two channels. And with Toslink Optical, it goes up to eight channels. Again, if I'm wrong, correct me on that. But I believe those are the only differences. As far as sound quality, so it brings me to that question. Do you need one? And the answer is, it depends. And I'll tell you, well, it all depends on your situation. If your interface is doing a really good job and you're happy with it, then you don't need it. So I decided to add this. Since we're talking about A to D converters, let's say you have an interface like this. Now, this is an Mbox Mini, but it doesn't matter which interface. There's a lot of different interfaces just like this one. Here's what I mean. Let's say you got something like this. Let's turn it around. On the back, you don't have a Toslink or SPDIF connection. All you have is your monitor outs and your line inputs. If you have an external preamp, you're going to have to hook it up to one of these line inputs. Your next question, can I bypass the preamps? The answer is no. The only way to bypass the preamps if you had those digital inputs and you don't. So what you have to do, you're going to have to hook up to that line input. Then you want to make sure you go to the input of the channel that you connected to. Make sure it's all the way down. Once you do that, you're set. You're going to get the best uh, signal possible this way. Let me tell you something. I know somebody that has this unit with a Neve clone mic pre and his recordings sound pretty good. Of course, his room is treated, but that's another conversation. That's another video. Now, there are some interfaces out there that have extremely great analog to digital converters, and you don't need to get anything else. Now, listen, don't ask me about brands, what I recommend. I have friends that use converters that are $2,000, $3,000, really expensive units, but they sound extremely amazing. Believe me, if you want to get 
a great signal. You uh, spend seven, eight hundred dollars on a preamp. You spend four, five hundred dollars on a external converter. You can still get fantastic sound. Believe me, you can. As you can see, this specific converter only has two inputs. Some converters have multiple inputs. I'm happy with it. I have an audio interface that has eight inputs, but I prefer one input compared to eight crappy ones. Now, something I'm not going to dive into because this is not the video for that, but I think it's important just to mention really quick. It doesn't matter if you have an expensive converter, an expensive interface, a $2,000 microphone, and you decide to record and you go to your preamp and you crank the hell out of that level and you see the zero. So, well, I can't zoom. I'm using a Prime's lens, so no zoom. Sorry about that. But over here, zero. And you're recording and you're hitting these meters all the way to zero then you're really kind of messing things up. So none of this is gonna help you. A lot of people see it in studios that those meters are hitting zero, and I'm not gonna get into that. That's due to the analog world and digital. You really can't do that. Read the specs on your audio interface. It will tell you where you need to be. I would really love to show you an example, but due to the fact that I'm using uh, my SLR, I don't know if you can notice the blinking lights. You're not really gonna see this meter. On my converter, when I'm recording, I'm over here on about 18. And that's the sweet spot for this converter. The manual says it. You know, it might look like uh, your recordings are really low. Believe me, you're gonna get a better result recording here at this level than being here. It's gonna sound way better. But anyway, hopefully I didn't confuse the hell out of you guys. If you have any question, let me know.